In this lab, we'll be measuring the power output of members of our class. You need to form groups of three. One person in your group will be the runner, and the two other people in your group will be the timers. So the first thing you need to do is get your runner and measure their weight on the scale that's given. So the runner will step on the scale and make sure to record their weight. So let's see what's this. 132. So whatever their weight is, make sure you record it on a separate sheet of paper. And then what we'll do is we'll have to convert that weight into newtons. So we're going to take our pounds and multiply it by 4.45. That's the magic number. 4.45. If you multiply the weight in pounds by that number, you will be able to get the weight in newtons. So now after you've measured the weight of your um, runner in your group, you'll be ready to start the experiment. Go. 2.57? 2.59. So on Lizzie's first trial, Mary, the first timer, got 2.57 seconds, and Shannon, the second timer, got 2.59 seconds. So on your lab sheet, you'll want to record the average, 2.58 seconds. Now Lizzie is going to try it again, but she's going to try to increase her power. Now remember, to increase your power, you're doing the same work over a shorter time. So in order to increase her power, she can try and climb the steps in a shorter time. Let's see if she can do it. And... 2.11? On Lizzie's second trial, Mary got 2.11 seconds, and Shannon got 2.05 seconds. So the average of that would be 2.08 seconds. So Lizzie did increase her power because she did the same work in a shorter amount of time. Now to finish this lab off, you would want your runner to try one more trial. Again, try to increase your power. And then after your runner has done three trials, you'll want to go to two other groups and record their information. So record their information for their runner their runner's three trials, and then go to another group and record that information, their runner's three trials. After we've done this, now we'll start the calculations. So the next thing we need to do are our calculations to figure out how powerful Lizzie was. So the first thing we calculated was the height of one stair. We calculated that to be 18 centimeters, but remember, we always have to convert those into meters. So if there's 18 centimeters, remember, remember there's 100 centimeters in one meter, so that would equal 0.18 meters. There were 12 stairs, so to figure out the entire vertical height, you'll have to take 0.18 meters, multiply that by the 20 stairs, and that will give you a total vertical height of 2.16 meters. Down in your data table, the height of the stairs, that's where you will re record the 2.16 meters in your data table. Now for the name, what I want you to write is your partner's name or the runner's name. In this case, we had Lizzie. And then put dash one representing her first trial. And then you'll do the same thing, Lizzie two representing her second trial. We only did two, but then you would have a third that says Lizzie dash three. So, and then remember, you'll get data from two other runners, so you should end up having nine names here because you'll have three runners with each having three trials. Lizzie's weight in newtons, we calculated her weight in pounds to be 132. The conversion is that one pound is equal to 4.45 newtons. So if we do the conversion, 132 pounds, and if you multiply that one pound is equal to 4.45 newtons, what we're doing is we're multiplying the pounds times the 4.45, and that'll give us the weight in newtons. So for Lizzie, 132 times 4.45 gives us a weight in newtons of 587.4. Since that was the same for both of these trials, you record that there. The next thing we'll need to record is the average time. And I said that before, the average time for her first trial was 2.58 seconds. And the average time for her second trial was 2.08 seconds. 
This is one data table, and now this is the calculations table. Again, list the same names that you had up here. So in our case, we have Lizzie 1 and Lizzie 2. The next thing we need to do is calculate her power. Remember the power equation is power equals work divided by time. Work divided by time. To figure out the work, it's the force times the distance. So to get the power, we'll take 587.4 times 2.16 and divide it by the time in seconds, which is 2.58. So let's calculate Lizzie's power for the first trial. 587.4 times 2.16 divided by 2.58 gives her power at 491 point, we'll go with two decimal places, 0.78, and power is in watts. Let's do the same thing with her second trial, 587.4 times 2.16 divided by 2.08 gives her power of 609.99 watts. So you can see how much more her power improved on her second trial. The next thing you want to figure out is the horsepower. And to calculate the horsepower, we learned that one, or one horsepower is equal to 700, so one horsepower, is equal to 746 watts. So to calculate the horsepower, you'll take your amount, your power in watts, and you'll divide it by 746 to get your horsepower. So 491.78 divided by 746 gives a horsepower of, we'll do it to two decimal places again, 0 0.66, and the second one, 609.99 divided by 746 gives a horsepower of 0.82. So here we've calculated Lizzie's power and her horsepower for both. So it'll be fun then to compare these values with the other runners in the class, and we'll look to see who is the most powerful in your class. We'll see you tomorrow.